All right. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today, we're going through Proverbs 6, verses 32 through 33. He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. So these are the verses for today. What's my baseline interpretation of it? Adultery is destroying oneself. It says it here. And if you're committing it, you lack sense. And you're going to get disgrace, dishonor, and it's not going to be wiped away. So the questions that came to my mind after reading this is like, okay, he who commits adultery lacks sense. So Proverbs here is claiming that adultery and not committing it is common sense. And a lot of us would agree with that. Huh? Good, good on you, Proverbs. But why would one do it if it's common sense not to do it? And why would one do it if it destroys oneself? Because we would also agree that adult, not doing adultery is common sense, and it does destroy oneself. It's going to destroy how you feel about yourself, your reputation with yourself, and the relationships in your life, which will further destroy you because we depend on relationships because we're sociable people. So why would one do it? And then we know that we're going to get wounds and dishonor because it's a shameful thing for us to do. And part of that shame is that we feel the judgment coming from other people. And we're like, this is not how people are supposed to conduct themselves. <laughs> and the disgrace will not be wiped away. Probably because we're going to have such a hard time forgiving ourselves, And people will also have a hard time trusting us again. And there's always going to be that scar there to remind you of the pain, even after it's healed. And so why would one do that? Why would one commit adultery? And it's important that we ask that question because I don't think adultery is the only action where we self-sabotage, right? So he who commits adultery lacks sense. There's also plenty of other things you can claim that say this person lacks sense. And doing this action also destroys them. For example, living in fear. I love to go back to living in fear because we all do it in so many ways. I think, again, I'm not adding or subtracting to the word, but you could substitute here. He who lives in fear lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. Like that would also be something that we would agree with as a society, right? Or he who um, lies lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. And so the Bible talks about adultery being the only sin where it's actually committed against oneself. So you're not destroying yourself in the biblical sense, but you are harming yourself in that you're giving your belief over to sin and not um, you know, committing your thoughts to God, right? And so, you know, if you're not Christian, you're just thinking of yourself as a worse person, maybe, or you're judging yourself. And if you're not judging yourself, you're harming relationships with people that you love. And so that's also hurting yourself. So there's all these things that we could do that hurt ourselves. But why do we do it? And that was the question I had when I read these verses. And the conclusion I came to is that we must think that we deserve it. And not necessarily deserve the action, but that we deserve the punishment that comes from the action or part of our identity associates with the action or with the result of the action. And because of that, we allow it to be in our lives. For example, some people um, are really gossipy, you know, it's okay for you to gossip in your life because you're a person who feels like you need to get people's love by bringing other people down maybe or gossiping about other people or having exclusive information to share it makes you special right so you gossip other people cling to their pride and so instead of gossiping you want to provide the most value you can to people so that they will love you because that feeds your ego that love comes from something you did and your ego can be like i did that that's me i'm loved for a reason we can't really comprehend being loved and not earning that love because we want to, you know, the law of reciprocity, we want to give back as much as we get. Right. And so people act out of different things and it destroys us, but we think we deserve the beliefs that we have about ourselves. And so if I believe that I'm somebody who needs to earn love, I will act out of pride. And that's why I allow that sin into my life. If I believe I'm somebody who is only valuable when I have exclusive information, I will tend to gossip more. If I'm somebody who believes I'm only valuable when I have everything in excess, I will be a glutton 
in my consumer purchasing, in the food I eat, in the um, you know fancy stuff that I drive, which also ties into pride, right? So it's like, what in your belief system is making you think that you deserve the outcome of that? And it's not just, it's believing that you're not loved such that you have to earn love, which makes you do things that actually harms you. And so it's like adultery harms you. But what in your belief system made you commit adultery? Maybe it's like you believe you're somebody who doesn't deserve honor or you believe you are a disgrace. And so you do things that reinforce that belief, confirmation bias. Or maybe you believe you can't have a stable relationship. And so you do something to mess up a stable relationship. All of these thoughts, all of these beliefs come to like the core of like, you know, you learn something when you were a child about how God loves you and how you are loved and how you are to love. And that's what allows us to have, you know, adultery, pride, gluttony, envy, lust, all those things come into our life because we think we deserve it. There's something in us that resonates with it and that resonates with that outcome, right? And because we entertain that part of ourselves, we get to the point of like, this is what we deserve. And it tends to be when we beat ourselves up with those negative thoughts after we've done something or imagine doing something, right? So entrepreneurial application of this, what do you think you deserve? That is the question you ask yourself. And then I want you to look at how does that influence your actions and not deserve in the sense of entitlement, but do your beliefs allow you to receive what you think you want? So if you want a really wholesome relationship, do your beliefs about relationships allow you to receive a wholesome relationship, however you define wholesome? Do your beliefs about money allow you to receive money? And let me give you a screenshot of this because... We do a lot of things that harm us, right? For example, if you're trying to sell something and you have to make cold calls to sell it, we will not make the cold calls. That is harmful to us. That is a very simple example. And let me show you how a belief maps to an action. And so my limiting belief about money, I found this out recently. I was listening to the podcast. Maybe I've talked about this on the show, maybe four or five, six episodes ago. Um, the limiting belief was that it was painful for me to spend money. And that pain for me spending money came from a scarcity of money. My family didn't have the most money growing up. So because I came to believe that money was scarce, it was painful for me to spend it because I was like, when is it coming back? Now, we project our beliefs onto others. And so for me, it's painful to spend money. So I project that belief onto others. Now it is painful for others to spend money too. This means that selling people things will be difficult because I will be causing them pain. If I give you a product or a service and you give me money in exchange for that, and I'm projecting my belief onto you that money is painful to spend, then in my head, you're experiencing pain as you give me the money for the product or service. And because I think I'm a good person, we all want to believe that we're a good person. I don't want to cause people pain. And that belief of me being a good person, not wanting to cause people pain, and that spending money is painful and then projecting that belief onto others makes it really hard to sell people stuff. And this was just shocking to me because I realized that I was trying to give a bunch of stuff away for free. And when you give stuff away for free, people don't value it. Huh? Because they value their money. And when they vote with their dollars, they're telling you that they value their pro your product or service more than the money that they're giving you. And so when you're giving stuff away for free, you're not even giving people an opportunity to truly value it. Like a lot of people choose to value things in our society today. I'm not saying money is the only way to value something. And when you have a lot of money, it's definitely not the only way to value something. But, you know, money is a display of our time, energy, and effort. And so this is us saying, we're going to commit some time, energy, and effort to this on the front end, making us more likely to continue committing to it on the back end, right? And so this was how my belief was messing up with um, my receiving money. And so there was an action that I was doing. And you can see that this action of being unable to take people's money because I thought I was causing them pain mapped back to a belief about money being scarce. The key here is that it's not that I didn't think I deserved money. It's that I believed I was a person who like was a good person. And so I wanted to do good things and money and taking money from people was a bad thing. 
and I believed that I didn't deserve bad things and believed money was a bad thing. You see what you see where I'm getting at here? It's not that I believed that I didn't deserve it, but that money was a bad thing. And I don't deserve bad things because I'm a good person or I don't deserve to do bad things because I'm a good person, which is crazy because as soon as you shift your belief about money and you fully shift it within you, like you actually change that belief, it's going to be easier for you to receive money because you are a person who loves to do good things. And because you love to do good things and give people opportunities to do good things, it now aligns with you. And what I didn't realize is that people like to spend money on the stuff that they like. There it is. I know that's simple, but that thought, that belief was not at the root of what I was doing. Spending money being painful was at the root of what I was doing. And so it was always hard for me to accept that money. So that's how you can map a belief to an action and a result in your life. It's not always that you don't deserve something. It could be that you don't deserve something bad and you've put something that's good into its wrong spot. So you think it's bad. For example, money is a good thing. It can be used as a tool, but it was bad for me because it's scarce and it causes pain. And because it was not in its proper spot, I was unable to receive it and use it like I wanted to, like I thought I wanted to. And that's how a belief can stop you from a, a subconscious belief can stop you from doing something that you want to do. And then you have to work through those subconscious beliefs by, you know, repeating the truth. And as many times as you were reinforced that money, that spending money is painful, you need to reinforce yourself that many more times that spending money is a good thing. And that can be used as a tool to impact people. And then you'll start to operate on the new belief, right? So where do I want this to show up in my life? I want an accurate understanding of the world that serves me. So I really want to get great at looking at my beliefs, what beliefs serve me, what beliefs don't, and just shed the ones that don't, go with the ones that do, and a streamlined process of it, right? And have that be my accurate understanding of the world. And how can you guys apply this to your life? I would say question the beliefs you've never thought to question. Is it actually hard to be successful? Is your job actually bad? Does money really matter? Are you meant to be doing what you're doing? Start asking yourself these life questions and, you know, listen to yourself because oftentimes we give ourselves the answers and we're just too scared to go forward with it. When you get the answer, listen to it, write it down, remember it and spend your days focusing on it. That's all we got for you guys today on the show. Thank you so much for listening. Um, this was a good one. I really liked the idea of mapping a belief to an action and what do you deserve? And then the nuance factor of like, sometimes you think you deserve something and you're perfectly right. Like maybe you're a person who thinks you deserve good things, but you are interpreting something that is naturally good as bad. And so you're not getting the thing that you need, which was my case with money. Something that is naturally good can be used as a tool to help people. I was interpreting as bad and causing people pain when they gave it to me. So it was hard for me to really ask for money and receive it, which was stopping me from doing the good and the impact that I wanted to do, which, hey, that might be another limiting belief. You don't need the money to make the impact and do the good that you want to do. But Ecclesiastes does say money solves all problems. So there we go. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.